Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, good looker shields, desolate search, peasants, vassals, minions. I'm a useful idiot. Today I want to talk about the, the Kurds, but specifically the PKK. And uh, the reason why uh, this is an interesting story is because the PKK are a Kurdish group originally uh, involved in the struggle against uh, Turkey, inside Turkey, for Kurdish rights in Turkey. And now they're uh, generally in uh, northern Iraq in the autonomous Kurdistan region, and now they're fighting against ISIS with the Kurds in northern Iraq and uh, uh, working ostensibly with the United States as well. So it's kind of problematic, as you, you can see, because once again we have a group that's labeled as a terrorist organization that the U.S. is willing to work with in the right situations. And I'm not making a judgment on uh, the PKK as to whether they're terrorists or not. Um, that's not really the point. Uh, the point being the, the uh, double standards of American foreign policy and then just the interesting fact that we have the PKK now being a formidable counterforce against uh, ISIS or the Islamic State in Iraq now. And uh, this will be like the good old days when I used to do uh, uh, long videos with a little more historic background. So I'm going to do a little background on the PKK for those who are not quite as familiar with them. And uh, so this is a, a group that uh, essentially has an existence from uh, 1984 to 2013, and uh, basically uh, involved in an armed struggle with Turkey for uh, Kurdish autonomy and the respect of Kurdish rights in Turkey, which is understandable considering they're somewhere between 10 and 25 percent of the population of Turkey. And they were originally founded in 1978, and they're uh, more or less a, a Marxist a radical group, so they have a, a long history, and uh, they uh, uh, also the PKK is interchangeable with the political and the military entity of uh, both the Kurdistan Workers Party and the People's Defense Force. And as I mentioned earlier, it's uh, kind of by ironic that, uh, that NATO, of which Turkey is a member, the United States and the EU all list. Uh, the, the PKK as a terrorist group, and incidentally, so does Iran. And uh, other countries that uh, list the PKK as a terrorist group are actually uh, Australia, Austria, Azerbaijan, Canada, Germany, Iran, Japan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Netherlands, New Zealand, Spain, and Syria. So an interesting array of uh, countries <clears throat> that uh, consider this PKK group a uh, terrorist group. And, in fact, uh, they kind of have earned that reputation, as it turns out. In the 1980s, they were known for a string of international terrorist attacks against both civilian and military targets in Europe and the Middle East. And then in the 1990s, uh, there was a lot of high-profile suicide attacks. In uh, 1999, the, the uh, founder of the group, Akalan, uh, was captured and put in prison and uh, uh, sentenced to death. And, uh, still languished in prison through most of uh, the 2000s. And uh, incidentally, one of the first uh, training camps for the PKK was in the Beka Valley uh, with support from Syria and the Palestinian Liberation Organization. So uh, once again, these uh, connections with uh, known supporters of uh, what, what we now know of as terrorism. So the PKK has certainly has that pedigree and in, uh, in the 2000s, the PKK mostly operated in the mountains between Iraq and Turkey uh, and with occasionally having uh, training camps in, in Europe, uh, notably Belgium and Netherlands, uh, both closed down. But it's a, a, an insurgency. Once again, uh, in the Kurdish history, annals of history, they will be freedom fighters. In the Turkish annals of history, they will be terrorists. Uh, and that's how it will be until one side or the other prevails. Um, and interestingly enough, too, in 2011, Iran and Turkey had joint operations against the PKK, because uh, the PKK, obviously, an insurgency against Turkey. The PKK also operates as an insurgency in a Kurdish uh, section of Iran. And uh, 2012, actually as recently as 2012, two years ago, uh, the conflict between the PKK and Turkey uh, peaked um, and, and reached a height that hadn't reached uh, since 1999 with over 400, 541 killed. 
then in 2013, just a year ago, a ceasefire was brokered, and the PKK actually moved uh, part of this agreement. The PKK wouldn't just didn't disarm, but they moved into northern Iraq. So we have uh, a number of uh, well, these PKK fighters uh, that originally, uh, at their height, reached a number of 17,000 in the 1990s, but the, the strength of the PKK now is supposedly roughly around 5,000. So they moved into northern Iraq, which is where we find them now. And uh, as you would imagine, the, the Baghdad government hasn't been too happy about the PKK uh, moving from Turkey into uh, northern Iraq and strengthening the Kurdish position. And, um, and in, the, in recent events, the uh, PKK forces are the ones that helped Yazidis escape um, from the uh, mountain there uh, through uh, back through Syria and in, back into northern, uh, northern Iraq and Kurdistan. And uh, most of their weapons have been from uh, Russia uh, via the Middle East, a lot of Eastern European Czechoslovakian weapons, and it seems like uh, they've had them for quite some time, but uh, they're also supported by Greece, Iran, Iraq, Russia, and Syria, so it's no surprise that they would end up with a lot of Russian weapons, even though it's also rumored that the CIA and Blackwater have uh, been involved in uh, arming them as well. So uh, so anyway, there's a, there's a bit of background on uh, the PKK, uh, another uh, convenient uh, ally for the United States now, and I, I'm sure the United States probably hasn't uh, eased their uh, listing of PKK as a terrorist group. They'll just work with them and turn a blind eye. And uh, so, once again, we have strange bedfellows in uh, all these events uh, unfolding in the Middle East. And uh, the PKK are another component of that. But uh, as I'll attach a video below, uh, it shows PKK fighters in the field against ISIS. And uh, apparently they're quite formidable. Um, and we had even more experience than a lot of uh, Peshmerga and uh, are very versed in this sort of warfare. So uh, nice to have them along at this moment uh, for uh, what many consider the good guys in this situation, the Kurds. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?